Hey guys, it's Lutonia here, and back with another overview video. This time we're going to be looking at all the Tech 1 Combat Frigates. I believe that this class is very healthy. There are a few differences in power, but overall it's a very healthy class. Uh, the Combat Frigates have now been out in their current iterations for just over two years now. The last time that most of the Combat Frigates were changed were in the Rubicon Point release, which was Rubicon 1.2, which I remember quite fondly because it was in the middle of the new, uh, the second New Eden Open tournament. Uh, most of the combat frigates were changed for the Retribution expansion and this was the patch that gave the most positive impact on all of the combat frigates because prior to that only the Rifter was <laughs> was the only one that was really flown. So uh, going by my experience and the metrics that I have available to me, you know obviously I'm not a CCP but I do, uh, I do uh, really enjoy looking at metrics like on Z um, zkillboard.com and a few other things. And uh, I believe that one of the combat figures is overpowered right now. Another one is underpowered a bit. One of them needs a complete redesign, but five of them are very strong, very well-rounded and in a great place in the meta right now. So CCP have done a pretty good job of balancing this class in my opinion. A few tweaks may be needed. CSM member Gossy Carr recently released a tier list on CrossingZebras.com about four months ago, and uh, my opinions mostly echo his. So the best way to think of the combat frigates is dividing them into two groups, offensive and defensive. Uh, each race has one combat frigate that has a defensive bonus, and they have one combat frigate that has an offensive bonus. So for Kodari, you have the Kestrel, which is all offensive, then you have the Merlin, which has one offensive and then the, the, the defensive bonus, which is the shield resistance bonus. For Mimitar, you have the Breacher and the Rifter. The Breacher is the defensive bonus one with the shield boost, uh, active shield boost bonus. And the Rifter is the offensive one with the two offensive bonuses. Uh, for Galanti, you have the Incursus, which is the defensive one because it has the local armor active rep bonus. And the Tristan is the offensive one because it has the, all, all the offensive bonuses. And then finally for Amar you have the Tormentor which is the offensive one because it has the, the turret cap reduction and the turret, the turret damage and then you have the Punisher which is the, the defensive one which has the uh, resistances and the damage. So starting out with the, starting out, um, with the Kaldari frigates because I've, they're of my favourites in all honesty and I think that they are the, the most well rounded uh, race right now. So both the Kestrel and the Merlin both of them are absolutely top tier right now and they're in a great space uh, great space, and they're very balanced. Um, there is a reason why I have 10 different Kestrel videos on my channel and that's because in Nullsec it is the strongest scram kiter in the game and it's also one of the easiest triggers in the game to fly in terms of micromanagement as you don't have to worry about cap or any active tank management. Just uh, macro PvP things like starting the fight at the correct ranges, you know, more focusing on your positioning, focusing on the... Uh, having the correct damage type loaded that sort of thing so there's not really too much for you to do while you're actually in the fight aside from you know not burning out your launches really so the Kestrel gets a bonus to missile velocity and missile damage while also having four launchers instead of the default three which the other frigates have the Condor and the Breacher so this enables the Kestrel to put out uh, close to uh, close range turret DPS to full scram and red range and it ha it also does so much damage with rage missiles and because of the velocity bonus it can actually do uh, use rage missiles to the edge of scram range and the Kestrel has the highest DPS out of all the Tech 1 missile ships. Uh, the problem that the Kestrel faces is that it is the slowest combat frigate in the game as well which makes it hard to catch uh, long range kiting ships and tacklers like interceptors and uh, it is really good at scram kiting, but the other ships will be able to gain on it in uh, scram and web range. But hopefully if you start the fight long enough, they're not going to make it to you before they die because you do so much DPS. Uh, Tiracide has been really kind to the Kestrel. It's now possible to get a Tech 2 medium shield extender fitted on a micro warp drive fit with no fitting implants if you have max skills. And this has also lowered the requirements of what you need to fit the Kestrel. Uh, you no longer need advanced weapon upgrades anymore to fly my Kestrel fit with the compact medium shield extender. So this takes out a week of skill training. Uh, you can just train, uh, I think, shield upgrades to level 4 instead of training weapon upgrades to level 5. And you'll be able to fit my Kestrel now. So that easily shaves 5 days of training off of the Kestrel skill plan. 
Uh, I love the Kestrel, but I, I do think the Kestrel is slightly weaker in Factional Warfare. If you're using an Afterburner Fit versus other Afterburner Frigates, you lose so much application and you can't use Rage in uh, Afterburner versus Afterburner fights because uh, whereas relative traversal stays the same almost, so uh, turrets versus turrets with Afterburner Fits don't actually lose any DPS against each other because essentially they're cancelling out each other's speed as much as they would if they were fighting uh, with uh, Scram MWD off. Against a, crest a Kestrel you want to try and f uh, fight a close range of high uh, tech 2 turret damage ammo if possible. Uh, the Kestrel is fat and slow so it cannot mitigate DPS so you can track it well with uh, Void and Conflagration. I'm not sure I'd use Hail on a Kestrel, I'll probably use EMP on the um, Mimitar projectile ships. Uh, other missile ships uh, obviously also want to brawl down the Kestrel because the Kestrel is going to try to abuse its missile velocity range bonus against them. So you want to make sure you can use Tech 2 uh, missiles against the Kestrel because again it has a really big SIG and it's not going to be able to evade uh, rage rocket damage. And the Kestrel wants obviously wants to uh, avoid rage damage by staying at like 8 or 9 kilometers. so you can't use rage against it but it can use rage against you. Um, the Kestrel is a very strong ship, and I really love the Kestrel. <laughs> uh, so, moving on to the Merlin. The Merlin is sort of the king of all-in at face range. The Merlin gets both a shield resistance and a damage bonus, which allows it to have the highest uh, effective hit points uh, over DPS ratio in the game for all the combat frigates. That means the Mer the Merlin is sort of the absolute king at fight at zero in like Pokemon-style battles, if that makes any sense to you. And it can also come out ahead even against uh, up ships sometimes against uh, destroyers and interdictors. Uh, like the Kestrel, Tyricide in C the Iconic expansion has been very kind to the Merlin. And it's now possible to fit a Tech 2 uh, Shield Extender instead of a Named with Micro Warp Drive and, and Neutrons. So it's actually gotten a lot, uh, quite a bit stronger in recent times in the past month or so. The Merlin like the Kestrel is fairly slow. And since it is using blasters, it can be taken advantage of of ships which can apply damage further away and is faster than it. So, for example, Executioner, Tormentor, Breacher, Tristan, those ships will be able to scram kite the Merlin and it will not be able to gain on them once the fight's actually started in the uh, single web fit that I use in Nolsec. So, moving on to Galanti, we have the Tristan and the Incursus. Now, Tristan, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is overpowered right now. It just has such a high effective hit points over DPS ratio, which is one of the things I talked about was the strength of the Merlin, while the Tristan it is in a kiting ship, uh, kiting fit, and it's also almost tied of being the third fastest combat figure in the game. It's only one meter per second slower than the Incursus when you're comparing just you know the ship hulls with uh, Meta Micro Warp Drive fitted. So it's really hard for the ships that can outbrawl it like the Tormentor and the Merlin, to actually be able to catch it in the first place. And uh, the, the Tristan just has brawling frigate stats uh, while being a, a, a kiter at the same time. Uh, the Tristan gets a bonus to drone tracking and hit points and hybrid tracking, although the later bonus is seldom used. Um, the tracking bonus allows the Tristan to use hobgoblins reliably, and it takes so long to defang in the frigate versus frigate fights it's off you're often going to be dead before you can kill the the tristan's uh five light drones and the three backups that it has um like i said the tristan is overpowered right now because it has almost close range brawling stats while engaging at 20 kilometers uh being able to avoid the ships that can exchange that can win an exchange at zero meters with it uh the tristan is also the most versatile combat figure in the game there are so many strong fits like Triple Tank uh, Tristan, Whole Tank Tristan, Blaster All In Tristan, Scram Kite Rail Tristan, <laughs> Newton Tristan, Newton Tristan. There are just so many fits to mention, and it scales very well in gangs too. While most of the brawling Nolsec fits that I'm using, like normally solo, maybe a small gang, the Tristan Kite fit scales so well in gangs, and the drone amplifier nerf did not really touch the Tristan nearly enough. Uh, personally, I would like to see some whole hit points and base speed shaved off of it. Uh, I'd like to see it getting slingshotted a lot more by Tormentors and Merlins, and also for it to lose the fight if it does get caught by uh, Scram kiting ships like the Kestrel a bit more. Um, fighting a, a Tristan is incredibly difficult because, as I mentioned, you know I think the kiting fit is the strongest fit in the game. 
because of the because it's basically a kiter that does close range DPS while also having close range DPS tank what you do, uh, the tank that you expect on a brawler and you also need to know what which of the six fits it's using you know if you're in factional warfare you're sitting on a beak on the beacon at zero because you think a, a kiting tristan is going to come in then all of a sudden it's say like close range newting tristan or a blaster tristan then you <laughs> lose the fight it's really frustrating so uh yeah, no, Tristan is due for a a bit of nerf, or a bit of the nerf arena bat, I think. Um, the Incursors, on the other hand, is very strong and it's uh very, much more balanced than the Tristan is, that's for sure. Uh, the the Incursors gets a bonus to active armor amount and hybrid damage. Uh, a lot of people put a lot more emphasis on the armor rep bonus, uh, but personally, I like to use the Incursors as a uh, as a much more speedy hole with whole rigs, you know, fitting it like a Tech 1 Fed Navy Comet. Uh, the Incursors is surprisingly fast, it almost breaks uh, 3.5 kilometers a second cold with an overdrive, so it allows it to snag a lot of kiting interceptors and frigates, and a lot of frigates actually, and a lot of people expect an Incursors to be like dual rep, this like 0ms Nightmare X uh, ship, and it's actually really fast and quite agile too, and it can actually evade quite a lot of uh, camps like that as well and it still has a really effective uh, tank and buffer and it doesn't quite have the effective hit point dps ratio as the merlin does but it is a lot faster than the merlin and unlike the merlin the incursus uh, is a lot harder to kite uh, but it does have the same weakness of the merlin in that it, it is vulnerable to be to being scram kited still and it, it does get the little the extra drone, so it does do a bit more DPS than the Merlin as well. Uh, so Mimitar, uh, Mimitar have I think one of the strongest frigates in the game, which is the Breacher, and uh, somewhat underpowered right now. But I think it's not too far off salvation. So uh, let's get on to the Breacher, which is the defensive combat frigate for Mimitar. It has a shield boost bonus and a missile rate of fire bonus, and a small drone bay on top of that. Uh, the Breacher doesn't quite have the DPS of the Kestrel, nor does it have the uh, the Velocity bonus, so it can't quite use Rage uh, as effectively as the Kestrel. But it makes up for that with more sustain and being really fast too. Um, that's another point, is the Kestrel is quite slow, whereas the Breacher is fast, and the Breacher can actually threaten a lot of kiting ships with, that the Kestrel would struggle to catch. Uh, I really like to use a dual tanked breacher which takes advantage of both a small ancillary armor rep and a medium ancillary shield booster. It can be really hard to micromanage though so I would really recommend using the Kestrel if you're a beginner. Again the breacher also requires a lot more skills because um, not only uh, do you need missiles but you also need drones as well to take full advantage of the breacher. Uh, if you can get all your charges off as well as using rocket range <laughs> it can be very efficient and it's really hard to break and you can actually win a lot of uh, a lot of uh, up ship fights by doing that uh, other combat you know most combat frigates are going to want to go close range uh, and try to break it through the dual tank and also punt and not allow it to use the uh, rate the rocket range dps advantage that it has and uh, the Kestrel will probably just want to try and kite it um, outside rage range, so it can just do. The, it can use its uh, missile velocity bonus against the Breacher. So moving on to the Rifter, uh, the Rifter used to be the king of Tech One frigates, and then Retribution happened, and it kind of got left in the dust. It did see some new life breathed into uh, life, sorry, life breathed into it in the Rubicon expansion, and when they swapped the tracking bonus to a fall of bonus because it was previously obsoleted by the slasher. Uh, the rifter, like I mentioned, is not far from salvation. I think the rifter just needs more fitting space in all honesty. I mean, it has too low grid and CPU to make an efficient artillery fit. I think if you could do, if you uh, are familiar with sort of the artillery wolf, if you could do like a tech one rifter wolf, that you know, obviously it would do a lot less damage and it wouldn't, uh, it, it would be a bit faster because it's a rifter and it's tech one. But it wouldn't quite have the damage and it wouldn't have the wolf's uh, buffer. You know, I think that would be really cool. Uh, I have a lot of uh, Rifter fits that just need like five more CPU or two more grid. Uh, ugh, I really wish the Rifter would get a bit more fitting space. 
Um, it's really hard to use the utility high slot on the Rifter, and if it was able to do that, I think it would be competitive, and I, you could put it in uh, with the Breacher, the Incursors, the Kestrel, uh, and the Merlin and the Tormentor as the strong but fair ships. Um, I think the Rifter is... Uh, quite he's not very favored in the current current meta i think it's even with the fall off bonus it's still going to lose to scram kiting ships at the edge of scram range and uh you know uh, blasters with no even with the uh fall off bonus are probably still going to be able to threaten the rifter a bit too much um the rifter is uh is the fastest combat frigate in the game though so it, it can be quite dangerous to uh kiters if if the Rifter is able to uh, slingshot them. Uh, when fighting against the Rifter, blaster ships obviously want to approach it, and laser ships and missile ships want to kite it with uh, uh, with Scorch and using rockets at range. So Amar are the least balanced. Um, they have quite a strong frigate in the Tormentor, but they also have the worst frigate in the game, which is the Punisher. So... <laughs> Uh, speaking about the the Tormentor, uh, it's incredibly strong right now. It has an energy turret capacity use bonus and an energy turret damage bonus, as well as a small drone bay. Uh, the Tormentor can put out incredible DPS both at close and long range, while also having an efficient tank. Uh, the Tormentor is probably the most powerful tech one frigate in factional warfare space, in my opinion. Uh, remember, I'm talking about Nullsec here, but in factional warfare space, where you, when you're using an after when you're using after benefit with, and you can get away with beams, it actually does blast the DPS at eight kilometers. While also being able to force off Kytus with microwave and not being able to take advantage of its cap as much. Uh, obviously, the beam tormentor has a lot of trouble with cap fitting and tracking when it has a microwave drive fit. But with an afterburner, you can mitigate all of those weaknesses. Uh, so the Tormentor struggles under cap pressure, and ships with utility highs want to take advantage of advantage of this by brawling it down. Uh, Tristan slash Rifter are good examples of ships with utility highs that want to punish the Tormentor. It is quite slow and unagile, so it will struggle to deal with long range kiters and tacklers like the Merlin and the Kestrel do. And uh, finally, onto the worst frigate in the game right now, which is the Punisher. It's in a really bad place. And uh, not only are there two great Tech One laser frigates in the Tormentor and the, ex the Executioner, it's also uh, really unsynergistic and it needs a complete redesign. Uh, the Punisher only has two mids. I do think two mids can work because the Claw and the Crusader are good, but. Um, it doesn't have a, an application bonus, and the slicer is always going to be the best one for optimal range. Giving it a tracking bonus isn't going to fix its problems. Uh, <coughs> uh, so the two mids basically means the Punisher doesn't have range control, and uh, with bad tracking and a weapon system which prefers the scram kite, and it can be taken advantage of by every other frigate. It also struggles with capacitor since it doesn't have the energy turret cap bonus, which is actually a pretty big deal. Um, which makes it too reliant on the utility high slot for a Nosferatu. And this is also, again, anti-synergistic because laser ships against all the other turret ships want to kite with Scorch. But if you can't kite, if you have to come into 5 kilometers or so to reliably use your Nos, then you're not going to be, you're not scram kiting anymore. So uh, that's a problem. It also struggles with CPU and DPS is just not there. Um, the extra two drones on the Tormentor do make a pretty huge uh, difference. And even if you're talking about bait ship, the Tormentor is better because you can just put like a cap injector or a web in the Tormentor third mid, which will give you more reliable tackle. And then it has like two drones. Like if you want to go full bait, you can go two EC300s on the Tormentor, for example. And uh, I would really like to see the, the Punisher redesigned as a missile ship, like a Tech One Maldiction or Vengeance, for example. There are currently no Tech One armor, uh, Tech One armor missile ships in the game, and I think it would be a great stepping stone into uh, the Maldiction, the Vengeance, and the Heretic. Uh, there are also no combat missile ships with utility highs, since the Breacher and the Kestrel do not have them. So I think it could be interesting, and on the Punisher trader low for a mid, it'll still be uh, quite tanky with uh, free loads. If you give it quite a lot of grid left over, so it can fit utility high and like a a decent plate, like a 200 millimeter plate, and you know maybe a 400 millimeter plate with rockets and nos, if you 
uh, dedicate uh, like a rig slot to a um, power grid rig. I think that would be really strong and it would be different and it would also uh, be a lot more welcome to new players training into the Vengeance and the Malediction which are both also uh, qu quite decent ships. So I, I hope you enjoyed this Combat Frigate overview. Um, hope I didn't ramble on too much. And uh, thanks for watching.